Hey everybody, happy Sunday to all of you watching. Thanks for tuning in and spending a little bit of your day with me. I have my top five cigars for the week for you coming straight out of my humidor. And as always, hopefully making their way into your week of smoking. I do love the comments. You guys are so great. I've been reading through a lot of them in the last few videos that I've done and um, it's just a lot of fun. You guys always share really great stories of what you're smoking or something that you're looking forward to trying or just different things. So thank you guys again for all the comments that you post. I really do appreciate it. Um, so starting with number five, we have the Macanudo Maduro. By the way, all of these cigars have, all but one have been on my lineup. Um, they are not new cigars other than one of them is a little bit newer like it came out in the last couple months But everything else has been out for a while and should be readily available for you guys So hopefully there's not any obstacles Also as far as I know there aren't any that are exclusive to the states I know there was one that I recommended last week that was apparently not available in the UK um, as far as where these cigars are all available or how you can get them is not always the same. It's not a one size fits all. So sometimes there are cigars that depending on where you live, you may not be able to have cigars shipped to you. And so if that's the case, I do apologize, but I do try to pick cigars that hopefully you guys can find easily um, for the most part. So again, back to number five, which is what I'm smoking here. The Macanudo Maduro. This one um, is not a new cigar by any means. And despite its very beautiful Maduro coloring, it's not a very strong cigar. So this would be a really nice Maduro to, to try if you're somebody that's afraid of Maduros. Um, I know there's a lot of you out there that make comments that, um, you know, the, the darker wrappers are kind of like, you know, you're not ready for those. But again, just because the wrapper is darker doesn't mean it's going to be an incredibly strong cigar. And the opposite is also true. Just because it's not a dark wrapper doesn't mean that it won't be strong. So it just depends on the cigar, the blend, um, all the components um, as to the strength level, as well as the overall body of the cigar. So this one being kind of true to that in... It's not a super strong cigar. The body of it is probably a nice medium and it's again been out there for a little while. So this one is featuring a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, a, a Mexican San Andres on the binder and then Mexican and Dominican on the filler. So you get nice cedar, cinnamon, nutmeg. You get a little bit of chocolate on it. You get coffee. And again, it's, I wouldn't call it mild, but it's definitely not a strong cigar. So it's one that you can feel comfortable if you are, again, somebody that's a little hesitant with Maduros. This would be an, a, an easy to, uh, cigar to try out, especially again with coffee. This is a nice mid-morning pairing with a nice cup of coffee. Moving on to number four, we have the Punch Gran Puro. This, um, this is a Honduran Puro. There are some variations on the Punch Gran Puro, you will find um, a Nicaraguan version. You will find some specialty, um, you know, cigars that look similar. So to pay attention, I guess, basically to the band color, if you're not familiar, um, that's usually the easiest way. Um, they do color variations on this particular line with the Punch Gran Puro. This one being their Honduran Puro. It's a very nice cigar, easy to smoke, inexpensive. I forgot to mention the price point on the last one on that Macanudo Maduro. Um, you should be able to find it between eight and nine dollars. Again, always depending on where you shop. Um, I will have the links in the body of the video. However, as always, I say, you know, definitely check your brick and mortars first and then resort to the online shopping at the, as a very last resort if you can't find them in your local, um, you know, cigar lounge because we definitely want to support our local lounges and, um, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> sorry, I get like sidetracked with stuff. Um, however, this one being a hunter and poodle, price point is very nice. It's uh, basically a five to six dollar stick, depending on the Vitola. And of course, depending on where you buy it, um, it has a nice pepper spice to it. There's an earthiness. There's a touch of chocolate. Uh, this one also, to me, tends to fall on the slightly milder side of medium. It's a, not a super strong cigar. So again, it's a safer stick for those of you who are fairly newer to smoking. I know there's a lot of you that watch this channel, so I do try to um, point that out when, um, when I remember to do so. Both of these cigars would be fine for your, for your newer uh, smoker. Now the same will not be said about these last three. <laughs> so again, if you're newer to smoking, and I mean new, like you've only been doing it 
or maybe I should say not the length of time, but maybe the amount of cigars that you smoke. If you're like a one a week smoker or just your very occasional smoker, you're gonna wanna ease into it versus somebody who is, maybe you haven't been smoking in a really long time. However, you tend to smoke multiple cigars throughout the week in your journey of trying different cigars, then these are ones to start out with and you can ease your way into um, more complex cigars, I guess you could say. And so going on to number three, we have this diesel. This is the Esteli Puro. So not only is this a Nicaraguan Puro, it's an actual Esteli Puro, meaning all the tobacco used in the cigar grown by AJ is uh, coming from that beautiful region of Nicaragua, Esteli. Um, one of my favorite places to visit. I love it. It's like a small area that produces some incredible tobacco and there's a ton of factories there, a ton of farms, and it's just... Um, it's a cool place if you're into cigars to to go and visit and um, I love everything about it I love the people there I love of obviously the tobacco that comes from there but this was really cool it's kind of like an ode to, to Esteli um, so this one is definitely kind of like a boom with it it's not gonna be you know crazy strong but it, it's gonna deliver those those kind of well-known Esteli characteristics, which one of them happens to be the strength. Again, not overwhelming on the strength, don't be afraid of it. It's just, it's gonna have some power with it. It's gonna have some nice flavor and um, as well as the aroma. I think that the aroma and the way that AJ managed to, to balance those components to still create a very smokable, very nice experience, um, it's really special. So I love, I love the idea behind this. Again, this is part of now the diesel um, core line. So um, you won't see this one you know, going away. It's not a limited run. You should be able to find this easily. Diesel I, is one of the brands that I find in a lot of different places. So again, it should be easier to find. Um, I did include a link to one source, but again, there's, there's multiple. Um, definitely a, a great cigar to try if you're a fan of the diesel lineup, which I happen to be. And that was the newer of the five that I mentioned. Now back to uh, my number two cigar, which I have had on the lineup before. I have a few of these in my humidor and I love, you guys know me, um, any chance to share a, a good Lancero? I do get that question a lot, surprisingly. Um, and while I don't always take the time to go in and address specifically because sometimes i get like hey can you recommend a good lancero it's like well i have recommended them on various videos and so it's kind of like you know go back and watch the videos <laughs> if you will but when i remember i try to bring attention to it so this is one of them this is the illusion this is the h1 it's a beautiful cigar um basically rumored to be dion's lancero so this is Something that anytime you get the person making the cigar that like this is their go-to, it's always, um, in my opinion, like cream of the crop because, you know, they, they're going to smoke the best of what they make, I would think. And so um, that's kind of what the story is with this one. But it's a beautiful cigar. Um, it does have a Nicaraguan cafe um, colorado wrapper and then Nicaraguan binder and filler. So you pick up cinnamon, vanilla, you get black pepper earth, you get oakiness on it. Um, it's, it has dark chocolate, it has coffee, it has cedar, it has like all these different flavors, but it's really balanced. And again, in the Lancero, it is phenomenal. I love this cigar. It is harder to find. Um, I did find a source that had them. However, um, I, I, I did look around for some other ones to post on there too, and I couldn't find many. This is not one that's super easy to find, but if you do find it, chances are it has some age to it and it's just fabulous. So definitely one that I would recommend. Um, I think I forgot to mention the price point on the last one. I keep doing that. The diesel, uh, you will find around $8.99 for the Robusto and then you know varying by 50 cents or so in the other two Vitolas up or down. Um, this particular one is surprisingly inexpensive. It's about, it's between nine and $10 for this Lancero. So really, in my opinion, it's a great price point for what you're getting. Um, just a really, really nice cigar. And if you can find a box of them, definitely um, pick them up. You, you won't be sorry. It's a beautiful cigar. Number one this week is going out to No Stranger on my lineup. This is another one from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Steve, uh, bleh, Steve Saka. <laughs> This is the Sin Compromiso. And you probably have noticed that I've had a lot of Steve Saka's cigars in my rotation lately because I've been smoking them a lot. Um, he's another one that it's like, if I, 
I, I just, I haven't smoked one of his cigars that I didn't like. And so when I have, I happen to have a few boxes of different ones and um, they're just really good. And so I always encourage you guys when I find, you know, cigars that I really, really enjoy, I try to kind of keep them in the mix frequently because um, they deserve to be shared. I did have somebody comment on um, a review that I posted recently, like, you know, do you ever post cigars that you don't like? Well, the answer is on my top five, no. I, I, I don't recommend um, on my top five cigars that I don't like. That would kind of be weird. Like these are all cigars that I like and that's why I'm recommending them. That's why they're on a list of top fives for the week. Um, I certainly would not recommend a cigar that I didn't like. Um, however, I do have reviews sprinkled in there of cigars that um, I, I didn't care for. It's just, it's not, re it's not a regular thing. I normally tend to, to post reviews and smoke cigars that I like. Um, I don't purposely try. I know there's people that purposely try to like slam certain cigar brand. I don't like to do that. And so while I will be honest, and if there's a cigar I don't like, I, you will hear about it. Um, I tend to, I don't know. I tend to try to really look for the cigars that um, I like and so those are the ones I do. I tend to just do more reviews of those However, you will find if you watch all my reviews, you will see some that um, are of cigars that I don't like so um, Anyway, that's why you're seeing more of the Dumbarton tobacco uh, Cigars on my lineup. It's just because I said I recently have been smoking a lot of them and I really like them And so if you have not yet had a chance to try them don't know what you're missing. Um, it's so, so good. So this Sin Compromiso is um, kind of like the motto for his brand, without compromise. That's how he makes his cigars. He's kind of like, you know, one of those unapologetic for just making good stuff. And he makes them according to how he likes to smoke, what he thinks is good. And it just so happens that many, many people agree with him. <laughs> so in fact, I haven't really found anybody um, even on the comments that don't like his cigars. Um, I could be wrong. I'm sure there's a couple people out there that maybe just what for whatever reason don't like them, but I really haven't seen that. I really see more so um, people that only have good things to say about the, the cigars that they've smoked by him. And I'm one of them really, really enjoy the variety, um, the quality of tobacco, because that is one thing that you could choose to not like the cigar because of whatever flavor profile maybe you didn't enjoy. However, the quality of the tobacco, um, it can't be argued with. He uses amazing tobacco in all his cigars. And um, yeah, anyway, that's why this one made it to number one this week. It also does carry a slightly higher price point being in the 14 to $50, 15, not 50, 14 to $15 range on the um, price point for this one but again well worth it using top quality grade a tobacco this one is featuring a san andres wrapper negro wrapper and then a hybridized ecuadorian habano binder and uh, apparently that is creating a thinner leaf um, for the binder and then um, a special grown uh, what is it what is the word he uses a special wording for it but it's basically nicaraguan tobacco um, for the filler and you're just going to get beautiful notes. You're going to get the dark chocolates. To me, I get almost like, you know, those dessert, dessert like characteristics. So, you know, brownie comes to mind, caramel, um, not so much the vanilla, but I guess you could, if you really search for it, you might get that little hint of that. I tend to pick up more of the richer flavor. So again, the chocolate, you almost get, you, you also get a little bit of an earthiness kind of in the background coffee. Um, there's a, an, a, woodsy like a charred oak kind of an element to it as well um, black pepper cinnamon i think i already mentioned but um, just a really nice cigar balanced um, probably not for your brand new smoker um, in fact not probably not for your brand new smoker however definitely a cigar that you should work up to getting to enjoy it's not overpowering it's not super strong but it does have a little bit of, of something behind it so if you're a brand new smoker not only would it probably be a little bit too much for you but it wouldn't be something that um you you may miss some of the flavors in other words like you want to kind of work up to that but it's a it's a phenomenal stick so definitely one that you would that i would recommend that you try um i have a box of these and um i yeah i love them so Anyway, hopefully you guys um, didn't mind my rambling on and I tried to get straight to the point this week. Um, I also have some different things going on. So I had a wonderful company 
um, Parkdale PPE that I did do a post. Um, they, I've done some stuff with them and they've, I've ordered some, some masks. So yes, I am somebody who still wears masks. I live in California. You cannot walk into any store here without having a mask on. Um, also, for those of you who are not living in California, if you travel, if you get on a plane, if you go to large public gatherings, they're still recommending the masks. Um, I don't know how long that's going to be. I would anticipate um, at the very least through election time, but I think even a little bit beyond as we get into flu season and all of that fun, not to be a Debbie Downer, but the reason I'm bringing that up is because I had some masks made um, to give out to you guys. So um, I'm not selling them. It's something that I'm just doing as a kind of like a giveaway in different things. So I have one that says Cigar Vixen, just like on my website. So it's the logo. Um, I actually have two different Cigar Vixen ones. So there's the, the white one that just has the writing on there. And then there's a black one that actually has the Cigar Band Cigar Vixen logo, which I have on um, a lot of my stuff. And then I have one for the Tassa's Coffee. And this is a different logo. It's not the one that I use on the coffee itself. This was like a backup one that um, when I was trying to pick out the design for the logo, I just loved this one, but I wanted to kind of keep it for once in a while things like stickers and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be fun to put it on a mask. So anyone who orders coffee from me um, while supplies last, I have a, a decent amount of these masks, will get a mask. Um, you can specify on the notes in your order which one you'd like. If I don't see a specification, I'll just pick for you. Um, and that goes for anyone who's on the automatic ordering because I do have a lot of um, can't think of the word subscriptions thank you for the coffee so thank you so all of you who subscribe and you get your regular um, coffee orders you will definitely be getting a mask um, and anyone who goes a step further and posts a picture on their Instagram or Facebook and tags me and tags the um, park Dale PPE, I'll give you their information on their post will actually be entered into a raffle. I'm going to be doing a couple box giveaways um, in the month of November and December for anybody who just feels like joining in in the fun and um, showing some love that way. So again, if you're somebody who's like anti-mask, sorry, I know there's, um, there's always those comments that float around out there, but again, I'm not one of them. I do wear a mask when I go out. Um, that's just kind of unfortunately what we're in right now so anyway thanks so much for tuning in and i hope that you guys have a fabulous week ahead of you and cheers